Good evening, my brothers. I am happy to be here, present with you all, to share with you my own experience of the congregation of the procurators. So the first part would be sharing of my experience and the second part that is after dinner we have the points for the recollection. As we know Father General is very particular that all the members of the society go through this experience and inner experience what the congregation went through. Here is a beautiful video prepared officially by the media of the society. Here is the Eucharist presided by Father General. It's a, such a deep, prayerful moment and experience to be there, to be partaking of this Eucharist with the, some of the lay people also who were there as pilgrims. And us here you see a kind of uh, Father giving vibrant, us the point so far flourishing, the joyful companions of the Lord. Here we have beautiful rain. Ah, it, I simply enjoyed that weather. Almost one full week it was raining. This is uh, Brother Garate's house, just next to the retreat house. Um, it's a very sacred place again for the society and uh, this is the heart of the castle of uh, St. Ignatius, mm, the conversion chapel where thousands of pilgrims come spend their moments in silent prayer, praying before the image of uh, St. Ignatius who underwent the conversion. And therefore, it was a very beautiful moment for us to have our Eucharist. We were taking turns in different groups, so we would get two, three chances a week. And here are the groups spending time in our spiritual conversation, reflecting together, sharing together our moments. Here is uh, again the Eucharist, which is being celebrated in our language groups. English being the major language, there were many participants and therefore we were assigned to the bigger chapel for that. And here Ale do. you have a few Nangal. spots uh, showing Kami the mood of the society, Somos. the mood of Naam the congregation, each chie. one responds. Ami Asan, Junta La, Hum Hey, we are Somos La Compañía de Jesús. Expressing his ecstasy. This is the aula where we had our congregation and as well as the points for the recollection. Here is the plenary session where the individuals start responding, they react respond to the different uh, points that uh, came that came up and here is the final moment mm -hmm. uh, to opt for cogenda or non cogenda and as we all know it was non cogenda here are our famous translators hmm. they were all in their cabins so many translators and these were the official secretaries of the society and here the pilgrims were simply 
taken up by to see about a hundred priests lining up and walking in procession into the basilica for the celebration of the Eucharist. And that was a moment, a touching moment, I am sure, for each one who witnessed that event. Here are some beautiful shots. This is the sanctuary of Loyola. Loyola spelled in Basque. And you see the surroundings. This was taken during the daytime. And the next is Basilica of St. Ignatius of Loyola, taken at night. Very charming one. Here is the grandeur of the sanctuary of the Basilica, where you still feel like uh, staying put in prayer and meditation. It's such a beautiful place, very, very inviting. And just next to the Basilica, we have the castle of Ignatius, as it is preserved now. This is a model of that. It is a four-story building built by the grandfather of Ignatius in the 14th century. And the topmost floor is the chapel, the conversion chapel, where Ignatius was recuperating and underwent the moments of conversion in his life. This is the chapel. This is the heart of the castle of Loyola, the conversion chapel. It's very inviting. Many, many people spend hours praying, meditating, sitting quietly in the presence of the Lord as Saint Ignatius himself would have done. This is the beautiful image we have in the corner of the conversion chapel where you can see Ignatius in ecstasy, in direct um, contact with the Lord himself. Here is a, a shot of the conservation going on in the Basilica. And this is an image, a beautiful image that was accompanying us throughout the congregation as well as the retreat. Okay. Where the disciples of Emmaus were recognizing the Lord progressively and uh, which moved them into action. It is a progressive recognition of the Lord in our own lives as it were. Then the task of the CP71, that is the congregation itself, as we know, it's not a legislative body for the society, but the purpose of the congregation is to decide whether or not to convoke a general congregation, as well as to acquaint for the general about the society from its grassroots to give him a sense of what is going on in the society and thereby to enable him to guide the society. I felt the congregation was a time of listening to the apostolic body of the society from the members from diverse situations in which we carry out our life and mission. As well as it was the voice of the Holy Spirit guiding us through the discernment that we had. I felt our response to the changes in human history is inadequate. And therefore, we felt it is the congregation that has to lead us forward. Here are some highlights that I would like to share with you all, highlights of the congregation. To begin with, it is about Father General himself. 
he was very very deeply calm and composed very much at peace he was fully confident and in control of the society he knows what he is doing where he is leading the society according to the spirit he was totally disposed to the spirit he was open and willing to be led often he talked about the minima compania the least society he was not worried about the decreasing number in the society if that is what god wants as he said but he wants us all to pray and work for more quality vocations to the society he has taken three major steps so far by way of renewing the society the first one as we know his declaration of the uaps the second one his official communication about the practice of poverty and the consequent um, follow up we had of that communication and the third one major it is the congregation itself a moment of conversion that can transform us to follow christ to poor humble and carrying the cross in a radical way the fourth step which he will take hereafter and in fact it is in progress too is the revision of the statutes on poverty and iag itself the next highlight of uh, the congregation is uh, the embargo text of the destato societatis the title of the text was uh, sent to collaborate in the mission of reconciling all things in christ for me i feel it's a mind blowing document it's a dynamite it's a very very challenging document i feel it's the masterpiece of father general everything his own he himself penned it every word every phrase was chosen by him as father general himself shared with us the holy father was the only person who had seen this document and in fact approved it before the congregation itself i feel this document has the potential to become the watershed in the life of the society we are awaiting the final version father general has been working at it very very hard then comes the next highlight that is the experience of the universal society all members from multilingual multicultural background gathered together with a single purpose what a beautiful moment it was cp 71 was based on communal discernment to see where the spirit is leading us to it was an experience of renewal and recommitment sharing of the prayer experience and the interior moments calling us for spiritual conversation it was a process of discernment which is very important and i feel it is a moment to interiorize and to personalize whatever we have had we have gone through during the congregation besides saint ignatius the accompaniment of former superior general fathers arupe kolonbag and nicholas was clearly felt 
during the various uh, moments of the congregation. The title sent to collaborate in the mission of reconciling all things in Christ is a living document to continue to nourish us and to give us the strength and the guidance that we need. Now to share with you all about some of the experiences about the venue and the time. I like to say it is the most ideal venue, mesmerizing to see the mountains, the plateaus, the valleys, the rivers, the greenery all around. Charming place. A place that shaped Ignatius. And the weather was such a favorable weather, very, very pleasant weather. Almost every day we had rain as well as sunshine, though it was a time of summer. And the place where we were accommodated, the retreat center, such a beautiful place with all the facilities of the aula, the dining hall, the chapels, as well as the uh, rooms where we had our sharings. The accompanying the sanctuary of Loyola just next door. Any time, day or night, we could step in there, spend our time in prayer and reflection. The pilgrims who were coming into the basilica, who were coming into the chapel of the conversion, it was a moment to see and relish. The experience of the divine plan and interventions, I could say, plenty. Though first time traveling to new places, to new communities, meeting new people, new organizations, uh, there are times when I was lost, I felt lost. Then the GPS or the people whom I approached for guidance would come to my rescue. The discipline of the public was beyond my imagination. On the road and in other public places. Then the experience of the Universal Society, I say, it was a, such a humbling experience for me to be with the Father General, his counselors and the chosen representatives of the whole society and to be part of the whole process of deliberations the society was going through. It was a feeling of being united with the whole society. It was a very humbling experience of being accepted in the Jesuit communities all over. Though language was the problem, in fact, it was not the problem at all. During my travel to different communities and places, I cannot but remember all those people who spent their valuable time with me, guided me, entertained me, took me out for a walk, showed me around the place. It was all beautiful moments. Then the visit to the Loyola Sanctuary as well as to Javier was a once in a lifetime experience. The site of the castle the family prestige and the lifestyle they were having, the Basque pride which was in them. Knowing all this, you could only appreciate how much it would have needed for them to leave it all behind and to follow the call of the Lord for the sake of His mission. And at the personal level, I feel it was a deep understanding and experience of the mission of the society through the church 
leading us all to a greater responsibility and commitment to it and therefore i am grateful to god grateful to the society and grateful to the province for this opportunity continuing with the experiences further i had while meeting the funding agencies they were all so much understanding and respectful and sympathetic to the political situation we are in their response in general was very positive and encouraging the public was extremely helpful some of them went out of their way to direct me and even accompany me when i felt lost then talking about the, the faith of the public the people who i saw in the churches most of them of course were elderly but very very faithful in their religious practices in their mass for their confession in fact in every church you could see people waiting in line to make their confession unfortunately in india i feel we have lost that sense of confession i also had the privilege i should say of taking part in the corpus christi procession at cologne beautiful beautiful event though the number would have been far for far more below the numbers that was there earlier it was a, a beautiful experience to be there as part of the congregation and the, the encouraging experience i have is to see the jesuits involved there in spiritual exercises in the renewal programs and uh, ignatian spirituality itself though they are not in the parishes but in their own places they were involved in these spiritual activities i also had a disturbing moments and one of the most disturbing facts is though europe has so many magnificent churches what is painful for us to see is uh, people leaving the official church the churches some of them have become museums for tourists the impact of secularization and consumerism and the scandals in the church has had such a terrible impact on the people the church's fall from grace is unimaginable i also came across some people who were quite indifferent when they learned that i am a priest in germany i heard officially 360000 people left the church in 2021 and in the year 2022 the number was much higher 5 lakhs 20000 and people wonder what will be the future church there after 10 years will there be christian there at all perhaps i see no presence of the church or christianity in europe god alone knows and therefore i like to take it as a strong signal a warning signal for us in india we may not be too far away to come into such a situation therefore let us be careful the impact of people leaving the church is felt in the depleting funds the funding agencies have for the developing countries though people are leaving i heard 
many still believe in god not that they have become atheists they believe in god but what they don't believe in is the official church and to my shock i realized that the clergy doesn't seem to be bothered about it they are not going in search of the lost sheep like we do here in india then sharing with you about the process that we followed the time table during the retreat we had the breakfast at 7:30 9 o'clock was the common prayer followed by the points the focus was on the grace that we wanted for the day there were suggestions from the scriptures from our sources from the documents available in the electronic library and the spiritual conversation which we all were going through every day at 1 o'clock we had the adoration followed by lunch at 1:30 then from 6 to 7:30 we were having the spiritual conversation in smaller groups they that was the highlight of the day followed by the eucharist at 8 o'clock and dinner at 9 and the similar schedule was followed even during the congregation the only difference was we had a plenary session in the evening where all the reports were projected onto the screen and there were moments for us to interact personally all those who were ready for it they could interact respond to those points here is a beautiful picture for all of us to see which speaks of our jesuit identity our identity is here to follow jesus jesus who are humble and carrying the cross for the general was time and again referring to this jesus and in fact in the document he says this is the jesus we encounter in the spiritual exercises and therefore our identity lies in following this jesus some of the major themes that came up during the congregation to start with i felt the society itself has come to a stage of fatigue stagnation we felt our response to the changing situations of human living conditions is inadequate our response perhaps was not that effective and therefore we felt there was a call for all of us to come to a sacred pause to rediscover our identity to rediscover our charism and of the apostolic body and therefore the task of the congregation was to reflect pray and discern the direction of the society our identity as we saw lies in identifying with and following christ who are humble and carrying the cross as companions of jesus under the banner of the cross the words of the spiritual exercises and the formula of the institute then the second major theme was that the society is an apostolic body much distinct from others it was it is meant for sanctifying others besides oneself 
it is to respond to the gaze of the holy trinity at the context of the world in which we live this is what the contemplation we have on the incarnation and therefore we were looking at the holy trinity gazing at the changing situations the present turmoil going on in this uh, um, universe then the next theme was uh, the mission the mission of the society this is the purpose for which the society was established the only reason for its coming into its existence is to serve the mission the mission of christ in and through the church and therefore christ's mission in today's context we see in the global socio economic political situation besides uh, the mission outside we felt there is also a mission within the society mission in our communities and therefore we are called to see our community itself as mission our life in the community is our mission we are called upon to recall the moments of the first companions their deliberations especially the venice experience was a key moment for them wherein they decided to live in communities united to one another but living for the mission then preserving a healthy tension between the cura personale and the cura apostolica you see the life mission tension in us being before doing more about it we'll see in the document when it comes then the universal apostolic priority itself confirmed and received as mission from the holy father to the whole society it is a spelling out of christ mission for the society for the next 10 years the next theme was collaborating in christ mission helping souls collaboration is very very vital affecting the church as well as the society in particular we collaborate with the others others also collaborate with us we are called to collaborate with the many the next theme is promoting a culture of safeguarding it is a call for self integrity from within it's not only in matters of safeguarding but also in all the other areas of our life the next theme was governance governance in the society governance itself as we see is for the better service of the mission so that we may serve the mission in a more effective and efficient manner and therefore we see governance in the society as more spiritual than administrative the significance of the manifestation during the visitation is worth reflecting on also the role of discernment in our lives then as the final theme like to share with you theme of finding god in all things ready and diligent to accomplish the will of god and to promote vocations vocations to the society now i like to share with you some of the themes which were being repeated constantly coming up through throughout the retreat as well as the congregation proper one of the first themes is 
our identity namely our identity lies in following christ the poor humble and carrying the cross and as companions of jesus we are called to be with him under the banner of the cross this is our experience in the spiritual exercises as well as the formula of the institute the next theme that was recurring was that the society is a part of the universal church we are not independent of the church the society is part of the church and in fact the origin of the society itself was to work from within the church we all know this from our experience from our readings also we see society as an apostolic body meant for christ mission we are not for any, anything else our communities our life everything is meant for the mission of christ and for the general time and again was talking about the minima compania the least society engaged in the mission of christ that experience itself should lead us forward with a greater vigor to follow christ poor we are called to be led by the spirit this was uh, the most common experience uh, throughout the for all the two for both the weeks and we felt it was a discernment in common in common it was for us to see where the spirit is leading us what the spirit is wanting us to do now what is the take away from the congregation what is the outcome in the context of our present changing and challenging times the society feels the need for jesuits to rediscover our identity because we are called to be companions of jesus poor humble and carrying the cross and thereby to reshape our mission and to respond to the changing times but for this image of jesus be our mission our life our society belaf no meaning then we felt the society needs to be reinvigorated and reenergized in the light of its rediscovered identity rediscovered identity as we see under the banner of the cross and therefore that's how uh, in line with that we have to reshape our mission the society also recognizes the need for renewal in the personal life of the individual jesuits in our communities in our mission of the present context and in our strategies to respond to this mission the follow up of the congregation is to further the process of renewal in its members in its communities and in its mission and to rededicate itself to face the challenges of the present times the congregation has given a clearer direction it has the potential to be the watershed in the life of the society the call for a sacred pause from our unstoppable and rhetoric apostolic activism which is unmindful of the present challenges facing humanity and to spend a quality time 
to reignite its interiority which alone can be the energy to recharge the whole society it is a detailed revision of the statutes on religious poverty of the society and the instruction on the administration of goods that is being in the process and finally i would say the only one take away from this congregation is it is a call to yeg on to the rediscovered identity and mission of the society in the present changing times from within the church that's the call we all face and therefore we are trying to spend this time together reflecting about our life life together life in the society life in our communities and in our mission therefore i like to end the first part of this sharing with this beautiful image the image of the beautiful smiling jesus jesus on the cross but smiling it looks as though he is beckoning us beckoning us to join him in his mission and therefore with these thoughts let's have a break and come back after our dinner for the points for recollection thank you